Hey everyone, Ben Taylor here and welcome to today's video. So it's tutorial time here as it always is on Tuesdays and I have a great little technique that I'm excited to share with you because it's quick, it's simple and most importantly it's going to make your photos look even better. So without further ado let's jump into today's tutorial and get started. <laughs> So before we get started with today's tutorial, I'd just like to take one minute to just say a big thank you to everyone who has been watching these videos and supporting the channel. And you know, without you guys, I wouldn't be doing what I love doing, which is making videos for you to enjoy. If this is your first time watching this video and you don't know what the channel's about, we make tutorials uh, mainly, which is Photoshop, Lightroom and photography. So if you're into that and that's something you'll really enjoy, then please subscribe to the channel and then join us here at our growing community. Okay, so today's tutorial is all about making your photos look even better. If you watch many of these videos, you know that I'm not really the kind of person that loves doing something the hard way, let's say. If it involves 55 different steps and then I can turn that into five steps and get the exactly same accomplishment in Photoshop, then I'm going to do it that way, the easy way, because it doesn't make sense to me to do it the difficult way. Now, today's tutorial is no exception, because today you're going to learn how to make your photos look better in just two steps. They're going to look more vibrant and more contrasty, and this is really going to make them pop out the image. So without further ado, let's jump into today's tutorial now and then really get started. Okay, so in today's tutorial, we're actually going to be working with three different images. We've got this first one here in front of us right now, which is this beautiful picture. It's a portrait image of this woman here. We're also going to be working with this image here, and finally this image here. Now, why am I working with three images? Well, it's really for me to show you that you can use this in a variety of ways. So this technique won't just work on a portrait image like this, it's actually going to work on all different kinds of images. So if you're a photographer and you don't shoot portrait but you shoot landscape or street photography or sports or whatever it is, you can use this technique to really get some great results with it. So how do we do this technique? Well, it's really simple. I mean the technique really in its essence involves adding more vibrance and contrast into the image, but this is done in a slightly different way. So how is it done in a different way? Well, the first step is to, like anything that I do in Photoshop, is to create another layer, a duplicate layer. Now if you don't know how to do that, it's super easy. You've just got to press Control J on your keyboard. If you're using a Mac, it's going to be Command J. Alternatively, you can always come down here and this is the Create a New Layer button. That simple. Now the first step in this process, in this very short process, is to come up to filter and we're going to choose something called Gaussian Blur. Now, if we were to choose Gaussian Blur straight away and add this onto our layer here, we would have problems. And you're probably asking yourself, well why? I've done that many times. The mistake a lot of people make is to add a Gaussian Blur to a layer but not to create a smart object. So I'm quickly going to show you what this would do. So if I go onto Filter, I hit Gaussian Blur, I've now added this blur onto this image. That's all great, but what happens if I want to change the strength of the blur because it's too strong or it's not strong enough? I don't have any options on my layer here to do that. So what would be a better way of doing this so we have complete control over the blur? Let's take a step back. The best way to do this would be to go onto the layer itself that you're adding the blur to, right click and then go up to convert to smart object. Now watch what happens when we add a blur onto the layer now. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So I'm going to choose a radius of about 16 for this image and click OK. Now look, on the layer itself, I actually have the Gaussian Blur option 
underneath the layer. So this means that any time I can double click on it and then change the strength of the blur to whatever I want it to be. Now the reason I told you that is because it's something that's really important to know that when you're using some filters you can use a smart object to have complete control over them at any point in the process. So now that we've added the blur and we've done this the correct way, the next and final step is to go ahead and add a blend mode. So I'm going to come here to the blend modes, click and I'm going to add soft light. This has now added the effect to make your image look really nice. Now you're probably looking at this thinking, well it looks too strong, I mean it doesn't look kind of where I'd want it to be. And that's very true, and with a lot of effects in uh, Photoshop, what you need to do is lower the opacity. So I'm simply just going to come to the opacity slider here and lower it down. And I'm going to bring this all the way down to about 50%. Now, let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, and this is the after. We've made this image really pop out, and we've done this by creating more vibrance and contrast in the image. Now just to prove that this is not something which works only for portraits, this is where we're going to now move on to the other images. So let's take a look at this one next. It's an absolutely beautiful image this, captured a tiger here in the water. Now what we're going to do is take the same process, we're going to press Ctrl and J, which is our duplicate layer. Remember we're going to right click and convert to a smart object so we have control over the blur, call it to filter and then choose our Gaussian blur here. Now I'm actually going to lower the effect of the blur slightly so that it stays a bit sharper, so about 12.5 and click OK. Now the final step is to just come along and add the soft light blend mode. Now look at that, I think that's really added so much depth into this image. Now as we did before I'm going to lower the opacity just a bit. So I'm going to bring this one down to about 60 I think. And let's have a look at the before and after. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the before and this is the after. Now at any point you can obviously push this up or down. I'm actually going to add a bit more strength into this. Now I think that it's really made this image stand out a lot. Okay, so the final one is this picture here, which is it's kind of a mixture of street photography and I suppose a landscape photo. So what we're going to do, go through the same process again, Control J to duplicate the layer, right click, convert to smart object, and then we want our blur. So simply choose your blur. Once again, I'm going to keep the radius quite low with the strength effect, I might bring this down to about 10. And that's because I want to keep quite a bit of the detail and sharpness in all the buildings here. If we add our blur higher, it would add a bit more of a soft effect, and I don't think that would look as good in the image. Now finally, let's just add our soft light blend mode. And there you go. Let's bring the opacity down a little bit to about 65. And have a look at the before and after. This is the before, and this is the after. Now at any point if you want to, you can add some other adjustments. This is not something which you just gotta leave alone. So you know, if you wanna add something else in, so for instance in this image, I think it could do with being a bit lighter. So all I need to do is come to adjustments, and in this case, I'm probably just gonna bump up the exposure slightly here. And there we go, it's just a little bit brighter. So it's a super little easy technique which you can apply to any of your photos and it will make them more punchy, give them more contrast and vibrance. And you know, you can do this if it's a portrait image, if it's street photography, landscape, whatever kind of photography, this can add something to your images to make them look even better. I really hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you found it really helpful. And you know, if you've got any cool little tricks or tips that you know and you'd like to share, then don't be shy, just put them down in the comments area below and then everyone on the channel and this community can also learn from what you have to share as well.
because after all, it's all about us growing together and you know, enjoying what we're passionate about, which is photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom. I hope whatever you do today, guys, you have an amazing day, and I hope to see you all again really soon.